Hey everyone, I'm Danny and welcome to Muggle Magic. Before we get into today's video, I just wanted to uh, let you guys know that I will be giving away three Marauders map. Now this is the new map that I made. Um, it's a complete custom template and it comes with a reversible cover and hidden footprints inside. Now how this giveaway is going to work is I'm going to be giving away one of these maps every thousand subscribers on the road to 5k. So we're going to be giving away three maps, that's one at 3k, one at 4k, and then the last one at 5k. So if you want a chance at winning one of these Marauders maps, definitely make sure you're subscribed to my channel. That set aside, one thing a wizard can never go without is a wand. I've had a lot of requests from people to do a wand making video, and I've wanted to do it for a really long time. So today I'm gonna show you how to make your own custom wand. And we're also gonna do custom wand boxes along with them. So all the supplies you're going to need are linked in the description box below. So I'm just gonna go ahead and go over supplies as we go during the video. If you want a full list, check out the description box. So the first thing you wanna do is go to a wooded area and pick up some sticks. And you don't want anything any thicker than this. This is probably the thickest you want it because we're going to be sort of shaving it down into a wand. I'm going to be using this stick. Um, you don't wanna get one that's kind of brittle because it will just snap when you're trying to make it. So make sure you get some good sturdy sticks. So to start off, we're going to use a box cutter. Um, you can use a pocket knife or anything that's sharp enough for this. And be very careful as you do this. Don't cut yourself. Always shave away from your hand, never toward yourself. So we're just going to shave off some of this bark. And when you're doing this, you don't have to push down really hard and you don't don't definitely go toward the, the wood. You wanna go just basically right along the top of it and just shave little bits off at, the, at a time. And as you can see, there are little spots here and there. That's fine, we're gonna fix those later. Or if you wanna keep them, that might be kind of cool looking for your wand. And I do realize that this might be a little bit tedious to do. I really wanted the wands that we make here to just look handmade and, and, and just kind of cool. You can leave some of the bark here as like a wand handle and then shave off the rest as you go down the wand. I think for this one I'm just going to shave the whole thing and not leave the handle there, but you could do that. Also something we didn't go over quite yet is the length of the wand, and our wand boxes are going to be 15 and a half inches long, just about. So we want our wand to be 13 to 14 inches long or shorter. Just make sure that you measure your wand. And yeah, this one's about 13 and a half inches. So that's perfect for uh, the size of the box that we're making. You can go in to the very tip of the wand and just shave it down so that it's, it doesn't come to like a sharp point. Like you don't want a weapon. <laughs> we're not trying to make a spear or anything, but shave it down so that the tip of it is maybe a little bit less uh, wide than a pencil maybe. Okay, so I think I've probably got that pretty close to the right width. Maybe I should go a little bit skinnier, but the next thing we're going to do is just start shaving off this so that we get like a tapered uh, effect so that it's the wand is thick here and about right here we start getting thinner and thinner until we get that uh, width for the tip. And it might take a little while to get just the right shape that you're looking for. We're going to sand this down. We don't need to sand it too much. Basically, you want to be able to run your hands along this without getting a splinter. So get your sandpaper out and just sand this down. And when you're done, you should have a pretty smooth wand that doesn't leave any splinters when you touch it. Okay, so next we're going to add some color. So I'm just gonna leave it like this and then I'm going to put a stain on it and then a clear coat finish. If you're gonna be uh, using this dark wood stain on your wands, uh, you're gonna wanna go outside because this stuff has some fumes you shouldn't be breathing in. I'm also gonna be using one of these dust masks just to be safe. Um, I'm also going to be wearing some rubber gloves I've got a screwdriver just to pop this open, and of course a paintbrush. Now if you're painting these wands, you can do that inside, I guess, it doesn't really matter. So if you're doing the dark wood stain, just go ahead and pop this open. And basically we're just going to uh, apply the dark wood finish to the wands with our paintbrush. We want these to sit for about five to 15 minutes, 
and then just take a rag and wipe them off to see if they're as dark as you want them to be. You don't really want them to sit for more than 15 minutes with this on there. Um, if they're not as dark as you'd like them to be, you can put another coat on and wait another 15 minutes and then do it again. Okay, so I let mine set for about uh, eight minutes because I don't want them to be extremely dark, but I did want them to be dark. So I'm just gonna take my rag and wipe the wet parts off of it. Now I think that looks pretty much how I wanted it to look. Okay, so this is what it looks like now. As you can see, it's just stained. It gave it some texture, I don't know, just some more detail. I think it looks pretty cool. So this is what we're gonna go with. I'm gonna let this sit for at least eight hours and then I'm gonna put clear coat finish on it. Okay, so these have been stained, but I left one that I did not stain just so that you guys can see what it'll look like after I apply the clear finish to them. So it only has to dry for about three to four hours and then it should be done and then we can uh, wipe it down, sand it off, and we're pretty much done. Okay, so these are all coated. We just need to wait three or four hours and then we'll come back to it. And when we come back, we're just gonna wipe them down. All right, so these are completely dry now. So I did the two with the uh, dark wood stain and then one without. And I really do love the look of these wands. Um, here's one with the stain. And here is the one that I'll be giving away. And I really love the look of this one. I love the handle on this one. Um, All right, so now we're gonna make our wand boxes. And to do that, just go to the link in the description to instructables.com and download the templates that I've provided. It comes in a few different sizes. I'm printing mine on 11 by 17 paper just because it's less cutting and gluing. We're just gonna have to glue this piece onto this piece to make it one. And we can cut this out with scissors. And put down a sheet of scrap paper, line these two pieces up here, and just use your glue stick to glue them together. Now just go ahead and make folds along all of these crease lines that you see. All of these crease lines should have folds on them so you can kind of fold this into a box-like shape. Now on the ends here, we're going to make a cut here and here. So see, these kind of can fold in like this. Go ahead and fold these flaps down underneath the box like this, underneath the template, and do that with all the outer edges too. So now you're left with this shape. Next, get out your cardboard, and this should be in pretty good shape. So this is why we folded the template. We're gonna lay it on top of the cardboard and trace it, because this is the shape we'd like the cardboard to be. Make sure that you hold this down so it doesn't move as you're tracing uh, around the edges of your template. There, so you should have a traced outline of your box shape. Now use a ruler and X-Acto knife to go ahead and cut this out. And you're probably gonna have to go over this a couple of times just to make sure that the cut goes all the way through the cardboard. Then you should be able to just pop this out. Okay, so we're left with this piece of cardboard. Take your ruler again, and you're gonna line it up so that you have a line going from uh, one corner here to the other corner here. Take your X-Acto knife again, but this time don't cut all the way through. You only want to put a cut on just the outside layer of the cardboard. So just push down very lightly and do that same thing for each corner. Okay, so we should be able to just fold these now that we have those cuts in them. Fold it in on the cut like this. So yeah, now you have sort of the uh, lid to your box. The next step is to glue our template onto the top of this box but you don't wanna put any glue on the uh, small flaps on the sides, not just yet. We'll get to that. Make sure you get it centered properly and glue it down. Now glue these two very long flaps down in on itself like this. Now at this point, fold each one of these smaller uh, parts of the box in and then glue 
these flaps that we made onto it like this. And once those are glued on, we'll be able to take this and fold it around. Now I've glued those on and I've applied glue to this. So you're going to glue this back piece on like this and then fold this flap in and glue it down on the inside. And then you should end up with something like this. Now go ahead and do that to the other side. So you should have the top of your box, which looks like this. And if you compare the length of this to, to the wand, it should fit. You can see that there are labels on both sides of the box and they're blank. Now you can print these like blank like I did and write something on them with a marker or a pen. Maybe the length of the wand on this side and then the name of the person who owns the wand on this side. Or you could uh, put the text in there on your computer before you print the template out. Okay, so I've measured the top of my box and drew lines on my cardboard where I want to cut. So I want to cut out this entire rectangle here. And the way I got those measurements was uh, measuring the inside of the box length and uh, width. And then we're also going to have to fold the sides up. So I measured how deep the box is and put that much border all along the outside of that initial rectangle. Go ahead and just cut out this entire thing with your ruler and X-Acto knife. You do want to put little slits here because this is gonna have to fold in so we can glue it into a box shape. So once you make the cuts, you should have these little flaps. And now we're gonna do the same thing that we did with the top of the box. We're not gonna penetrate all the way through the cardboard, but just make very small slits from each corner to each corner so that we can fold our box. Just put some glue on the inside of these flaps and glue them to this part so that we get a box shape like that. Okay, so the bottom of the box should look like this. Sometimes the cardboard doesn't really want to stick in this shape. So I pinched and held each one of these uh, for a little while to try and get it to stick. And then to get it to hold the shape while it dried, I just put the top of the box on it. But the wand rattles around in there and it doesn't look that great when you open it up. So let's fix that. Line the sides of this box with cotton balls. Put a little bit of glue on the bottom and also on the edge of the box like that. Line it with cotton balls. But you want to leave like some room above the cotton balls so kind of try and squish them down. So grab the cloth that you got. Kind of take a look at how it's going to line the inside of your box. So give it a little bit of you know slack on each side. You want maybe an inch or less and make sure that it dips into the middle. So we should be able to just cut the cloth around that shape of the box. So the next thing we wanna do is just take our glue stick and you're gonna to want to apply glue to the very center of your box here and all around the edge, right in here, all around the cardboard. Now take your cloth and kind of cover your box with it like this. So glue down the center and then um, push it against the edges and try not to reveal any of the uh, cotton. And you're probably gonna have some that doesn't quite fit. Just trim it off. And you can see that the wand sits in there quite well. You might get a little bit of scraggliness around here when you put the cloth in. To fix that, use just a paper bag. We're gonna glue it all on the outside of the box, which will make the outside of the box look better too but also we're gonna fold it in and just glue it down to cover up that inconsistency of the cloth and the glue and stuff. Trace along the shape of your box with a pencil. For each side of the box after that, just tip it up like this and then trace around that as well. Now you should have this. You're gonna have to make uh, cuts here, 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 and there. Basically this is pretty much the same idea as the template we put on the top of the box. And you should end up with something like this. I really hope this tutorial helps you guys with whatever you're going to use it for. If you want to win the wand that I made in this video today, all you need to do is make sure that you're subscribed to my channel, you like this video, and leave a comment below letting me know whose wand is your favorite in the Harry Potter series. I have to say that I really like Sirius Black's wand. However, I also really like the Elder Wand. I'm kind of conflicted. I'm not sure which one's my favorite, but let me know what yours is in the comment section below. Also, check out the description box below where you can find all the downloads you need for this tutorial, as well as all the supplies. So follow my channel for more Harry Potter DIYs and more. All right, that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.